In this video, we are going to perform transistor matching using the Digilent Analog Discovery. For this example, we have seven type MPSA06 transistors, and our objective is to find the two that best match each other. In a previous video, which is linked below, I showed how to set up and configure the Digilent Analog Discovery and the Waveforms software. In this example, we're going to match our transistors using the family of curves. The Digilent tool has the ability to remember the curves using this button here. So we're going to add a trace. And you'll notice it's called Reference 1. We'll just leave that alone. Next, I'm replacing the transistor, being careful to do it very quickly so as not to have it overheat. Let me add a trace. This is transistor 2. Now transistor 3. Add a trace and so on and so forth, adding all seven transistors. At this point, we have all seven transistors in the system. I did mention that we had to be careful about heat. Um, here's an example. So this is reference seven, and watch what happens. If I hold the transistor, now it's just being held between my fingers and you can see that the curves are changing. Or if we wanted to make it a little more dramatic, let's hit it with a can of compressed air. So you can see that the temperature does greatly influence the characteristic curves. At this point, we're going to turn off the active trace and then we're going to compare individual transistors. For example, we can compare 1 to 7, not a good match, 2 to 7, not a good match, 3 to 7, 4 to 7, 5 to 7, 6 to 7. So at this point, I'm going to say that 7 is not going to be matched with anything. Let's try 6. 6 to 1, that's a pretty good fit. 6 to 2, pretty good fit. Not to 3. Definitely not to four, not to five. So we could say that one, two, and six are pretty good fits with each other. Let me write that down. So that's one, two, and six. Just out of curiosity, let's look at five. So five to one, nope. Five to two, nope. Five to three, no. Five to four is a reasonable match. And I think that completes our matching. Let's go back and look at one to two. That's almost identical. Let's look at one to six again. I would argue that one to two is a better match. So with this simple tool, we can look at the transistors and we can see how closely they match and even select a pair that is quite well matched. And that may be useful to you if you're playing with uh, analog musical synthesizers or if you're doing audio amplification. I do hope you found this information useful. Please leave comments below if you have any thoughts or concerns about this transistor matching process.